Um, lots of things. I just um, wanted to be in the correct order. Okay. The five points of Calvinism that Canadians uh, respond to the. Uh, there are rebuttals, there are, there are options to okay. Calvin. About the terms on election. Mm -hmm. And uh, we discussed like the things that should have been coming. Uh -huh. And then the first point that both of them agree that person that uh, men probably meant sinful. Okay. Uh, and the second point is that nobody deserves to be saved. Mm -hmm. awesome. And that God saves. Mm -hmm. okay. Jesus' sacrifice is perfect and final to save everybody. Okay. And that's spirit's work. Not so. Not so. Yeah. And um, that spirits work to open people's eyes. And those who come to the Lord, Lord doesn't kick out anybody. And, and he also expects that a Christian should live the life according to the gospel. Okay. Peter's vision. And uh, we saw that God is going to be uh, bring a a big change, and when we saw God's patience there, that we showed the vision three times, and everything that he organized at the correct time, when it was angry on the roof, that wasn't any coincidence. And how about things that happen in uh, Acts 15, the council? Mm -hmm. It would have, well, whatever happened in Cornelius, what would that story would have big significance in the council? Okay. Like um, the order of salvation. Gordon's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and their uh, schemes, like uh, yeah. what differences do they have? One of them told that first uh, new birth, then uh, repentance and faith, and the other way around, but both of them told. The uh, uh, claim that uh, that's the Holy Spirit's work to bring person to repentance. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're talking about repentance. 
also that's the best of our yeah. How God wants us to repent. Mm -hmm. So sorrow for, for sin, you know, no, just for the consequence of the sin. Okay. Also about the faith. What is faith? Like, how do we understand that term? I knew from Gurdum when I read that it involves three layers in it. And when you mentioned that, it kind of solidified in my mind. So that, uh, those three layers are important. <laughs> and the last one that the person directs their faith to Jesus. <laughs> After which comes repentance. <laughs> and then a bit about repentance, like what how do we define what does it mean? <laughs> That is a change of mind, as we saw. And after that, you live your life like Jesus wants you. So you, your life's ideas and decisions are his. Okay. Maybe not. Great order. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. It shows you weren't asleep yesterday. Mm. He, he wasn't. He wasn't asleep yesterday. Hello. <laughs> Today we're we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk about uh, several different uh, further aspects or other aspects of the doctrine of salvation. <laughs> so the first one we're going to talk about is, is the new birth or being born again. Now, I, I need to say in the beginning that when I'm talking about new birth today, I'm talking about <clears throat> the more broad understanding of new birth. When, when we talked about the same idea in uh, the order of salvation in relation to, to Calvinists, uh, yeah, Calvinism, uh, Grudem, Sproul, other Calvinists, are using that term in a much more narrow sense. Now they believe in it in a broad sense. But when they put it in the order of salvation, they're meaning it in a very narrow sense. They're meaning in the narrow sense of the the imparting or the giving of the ability to have faith and repent. They're not meaning in the sense of total transformation of the person. Now they believe that occurs, but it's a, a more narrower uh, work of the spirit that opens the door for faith and repentance. But they would not say that without faith and repentance, that person is going to become a new creation. But uh, uh, so there's a narrow sense of the spirit in giving that person the ability to believe and to repent. It culminates in the broader sense of the new birth, which means becoming a new creation. So I just didn't want to confuse 
and now he's freed not just by position but he has that potential as another person put it being born again is a radical change in the inner content of the life of the heart and the moral aspirations of the soul so before leaning towards sin, I think attracted sin. Now leaning towards righteousness. And free to live out their righteousness. So, we have a new inclination, we have a new leaning, and we have a new freedom because of this. This. So, with this description, as I understood, we're not neutral, but actually we're leaning towards righteousness instead. Yes, it is. 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 Yes, uh, so basically right now the desire to uh, do works of righteousness is bigger than a uh, desire to live in sin was before um as big I would say but it's the dominant leaning now, we'll see as we go through those old that old leaning is not totally erased but we suddenly have a new leaning that is in dominant direction now that doesn't mean we're perfect but before we right. could do some good things but we had to fight against that leaning and now when we're sinning, we're actually sinning against our very nature. But old habits, the world we live in, 
still want to drag us back the long way. It's the whole battle between the flesh and the spirit. But if we continually give in to this new leaning and the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we won't fulfill the desires of the old you look confused on that. Okay. 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 I'm just uh, attentively listening. If I, if I may ask a question. No, you can't. Church has so if we say that uh, sin influenced all of the areas of our lives, mm-hmm. we can also say that after the new birth, the new birth, also influences on all of the areas of our lives. Yes. So there's no area that the power of our new birth doesn't reach. Right. Because if it says that the old is gone, behold, everything is new. So we can conclude that this too influenced on all of the areas yes now it doesn't mean we become perfect when we get to sanctification we're going to see that we have to grow in that new life that we receive but we have a whole new potential potential because there's people who play that uh, yeah, we have a new birth, but uh, it doesn't influence many of our many of the areas of our lives. Yeah, it's not just your brain gets, not just your mind gets saved. Or your soul gets saved. You become a new creation. Now, people can fight against that new nature. I like the way it is sometimes built. Before we were born again, we sinned because we had to. Now we sin because we want to. Any temptation we face now, we can't overcome. But we don't always choose to overcome. So that's the, that's the bad part. But yes, that new nature is in there. It's going to be trying to work its way out right. in just all the areas of our lives. That's why even though the new birth is an internal change, there should be Outward changes in behavior, in words, in attitudes that give witness to what happened inside. So the bottom line, if a person says, I was saved, I was born again, and nothing changes, they probably... Did a religious ritual, but didn't really establish a relationship with Jesus. Now we definitely see that, you know, in John 3, that this is a an inner thing that we can't, we can see that it's happened. John 3. John chapter 3. Um, you the wind blows where it wants to you don't know where it comes from you don't know where it goes in the case of everyone born with the spirit you, you can't 
take a microscope or you can't take an instrument and look at how all this is happening inside a person. You can't even many times nail down the moment when it happened. Which is see the effect. You know, two nights ago, I looked out my window, I heard noise, it was raining. No rain. But it was wind. Did I see the wind? I heard the wind, the effect of the wind. And I saw the trees moving. Yeah, oh, that's the way. That's all right. Then, But I didn't see the wind. So it's the same way. It's an internal thing that happens, and there's results that we can go. Oh, okay, this person was changed. I scored some tests, and then King Bana by its make testament that I'll take in our chin chair. The other person process happened. What I smell to poke fellow, but chess car of my get us the Ned King or some tats. It is. An event that happens in the life of all believers. And it is the work of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 1 13 talks about us all being baptized into one body by his spirit. And the word baptized there means totally immersed in. We were completely immersed in Christ's body. We became united with him through the Spirit. And so that's why Jesus talked about John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Spirit. Remember, Yet, hey, we first started talking about the Trinitarian basis of salvation. The Father planned it, the Son provided it. And the Spirit realizes it or applies it. That's one of the ways He applies it to us. He takes everything, that victory that Jesus won through his death and resurrection. And by uniting us to Christ, that victory becomes ours. And so, in another way of speaking, Paul can say, I am crucified with Christ. But also in his resurrection. But my old man has died. I've been given that new life. As uh, Muhammad said, a new birth occurs to a person instantly. Always in the far hidden parts of the soul. It's not an external thing. And sometimes when yeah, we talk yeah, about yeah. it being recognized by its fruits, yeah. and we'll talk more about the fruits, but we start to, some people start to think of my conversion experience, how I got saved. It's standard, it's normative for all people. Postrov didn't cry when he got saved. So if you start crying, you You didn't get saved. I didn't cry when I got saved. Or the opposite. Uh, when my wife got, uh, made her commitment to Christ, yeah, uh, it was at the end of a worship service, and a special <laughs> evangelistic service. <laughs> and there were several others who had come forward to make that decision. <laughs> and everybody was crying. <laughs> except her. 
Daha sinirleniyordu. And she had this goofy huge grin on her face. No, that is completely aynı bir bana. She looked like a character from, you know, from a multi, from a cartoon. Multi ki erotikleşkinler. She walked up to the pastor and she said, "Hovin mola sabahsız. Is something wrong with me?" Sure, but and she that they're all crying. I'm really happy. Yes. I just want to jump and run. They're weird. You're normal. You don't think they're too normal. So that the fruits are more in moral transformation, moral and spiritual transformation. Now there will be emotional elements, but are you going to be in the way we think and the way we choose? We have a new, we have a, we have a new inclination. We have a new guiding. One of the one of the fruits that is uh, often pointed to when, uh, when we start to think and read the scripture, one of them is a person's attitude towards scripture. Typically, as a result of this new life, we start. We start to have more of a desire to read God's word. Definitely, First John will say that if we're born again, then we're going to love righteousness and hate sin. So things that I before thought were okay, I'm suddenly going to see, mm, I can't do that anymore. That's very normal. Third typical result or fruit of the new birth is love for others. You know, John will say, if you don't love your brother who you can see, but you say you love God who you can't see, that's wrong. Those who love the word of care. Often as well, prayer becomes very different. It's not just a ritual. Uh, yeah. uh, it's a practical ritual. Now, when we're talking about this fruit, though, and this transformation of the whole person, we have to take we have to remember where that person started from where he was when God found him a friend of mine um, brought to faith a very rough person I'm, I'm, and his typical language was not very good. Yeah. He had some interesting words he always used. And then the day that he baptized the guy, the guy was so excited and his heart is filled with joy and he comes up out of the water and out of his mouth comes all of these old bad words that he used when he was excited. And all the little ladies of the church are looking at him like, what's going on? <laughs> the pastor had to say, don't worry, ladies, we'll teach him some new work. Oh, but <laughs> if you know if you know if Hobnan has grown up in church, and he knows how to hide his sins, you're straight from the world. Hopman's going to look better in the first month of his life. Because he already knew how to present that holy facade. 
And actually, you may be growing faster than he is. But you just started from a different point. But still, what is success? So, in dealing with people and in, in looking at the fruits of his new birth, I think, and I know, uh, things and the we're looking for a change of direction. More so than a list of accomplishments. Does, does that make a difference? Does that make sense? We want to look for a change of direction and, and, and an increased effort to go the right direction. More so than a list of specific accomplishments in the the accomplishments may take some time. Often, though, these fruits are the, this first love, this first passion that appears indicating change of direction is more dramatic it's more evident if a person is straight from the world than if they grew up in church. Because for the person who grew up in church, most of the things that are happening are happening internally. The person straight from the world, it's probably happening in a more visible external way. It can also be described as the resurrection of a person from a dead spiritual state. Um, who wants to read Titus 3 3.5? <laughs> And this this picture of this of the new birth here involves two aspects. This regeneration is washing is the washing away of the dirt of sin. I think in Veda Veda Tanunda. Uh, so, it is applying the forgiveness avail available because of Jesus' death and resurrection. To the heart and life of that person. And then it's also the renewing that's happening by the Holy Spirit. It washes off the dirt of the past. And he changes the inclination or the basic direction or the basic leaning of the Before they were dead in their sins, now they're alive. Before they were blind, now they see. Um, he made a compliment. Were they, they were uh, slaves to sin? Now they're free to do righteousness. Or yeah. Paul will say, now they're slaves to righteousness. Mm -hmm. So it's a radical change in the inner part of the person. So Martin, Nedkin, Masia, Armatakan, Popochuna. Prohanov said, simultaneously with repentance, and turning to God. This transformation occurs in the inside of the person. And in that process, a new person, a new identity, a new nature appears. Jesus told Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. Before Nicodemus, he's confused. He's like, my mom's not going to agree to that. I can't go back in there. I won't fit. Mm -hmm. I forgot to agree that. Yeah, of course. 
Պատկերած չեք առաջ է անգամ էր սեքսը, վերստին ծնվել։ Հովանասը սիզում է ոգտագործել բար էր, որոնք ունեն երկու հնարավոր իմաս, կան երկու հնարավոր նյուանսներ, որ իս էս դը որ բորն ագեն, երբ նյան ասում է վերստին ծնվել բարը, դյան որ կան մին ագեն, դա կարող է նշանակել կամ վերևից։ So, Nicodemus is thinking the first meeting a second time. Առաջին իմ աստիմ ասիմ 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 � կարոնք են թտրել, որ ջուրը նկատեն իր վիզիկական ծնում դին, ես հոգևոր ծնում դին, որովհետև հետո նյանույն բան ասում է մի ուրիշ կերպով աստ հրեական ստանելով, այն ինչ ծնված է մարնից տարմիլը, այն ինչ ծ Ասաց ես ասինց այդ ավոր ես խոսում եմ կեզ հետ հոգևոր ծնում դիմ ասին, որովոր կոն ներսի վերապոխումնը։ Բատք գիտակցենք, որ այս վերստին ծնումնը։ Իսկան հոգևոր ծնում։ It is a radical transformation. Սա արմատական վերապոխում է not the cleaning up of the old nature. Ոչ թե հին բնության մակրում։ It's not just the reforming of the old flesh or sinful nature. Սրա ուղակի հին մարմնի ռեվորմացիա չէ։ It's the giving of a new nature. Դա այն է երբ կեզ տրվում է նոր բնություն։ It doesn't mean he has a better version of what he already had. Չի նշանակում, որ իր ունեցացի ողակի ավելի լավ հարմացված հարբերակն է, չէ ամբողջության նոր մի բանը տրվում։ Now, it's sounding pretty good so far, right? Դեր լավ է հնչում, չէ ամեն բան։ We've got new inclinations, we've got a new leaning, ունենք նոր հակվածություններ, ունե Ոտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտպտ
Այս հատվածի վերարչում նա նույնպես ասում է And by the way, when he gives the fruit of the spirit in verse 22, 23, when these things start to appear in the life of a person, more and more, they are an indic they are indicators of the fact that this person has been born again because these are the things that the spirit develops in you as you obey him in the armenian bible do they use for the word spirit do you sometimes have a little letter and sometimes have a big letter in armenian do you have small and capital letters okay okay different languages are different sorry in 22 spirit big s little s yeah that's right praise god the the Russian Bible translation often writes that with a little. And because all the way back to the mid 1800s when the synodal translation came out, translators were orthodox. And so they wrote the word spirit with a little letter every time. Uh, but there's a big difference here. If this is the fruit of the big letter spirit, it's the Holy Spirit. If it's a small letter, it's the spirit, it's the human spirit. So unfortunately, uh, Rather than seeing this as a call to submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and to allow him to develop these characteristics, yeah. sometimes Russian speaking preachers yeah. will yeah. preach this. If you'll just obey your conscience, you'll become this kind of person. It's the fruit of obeying your human conscience. But verse 25 makes it clear. We're talking about the spirit. Who wants to read 25? <laughs> Mm -hmm. If we live by the spirit, mm -hmm. but in the, the original language, the wording is more since we live by the spirit. Uh, well, our new life in Christ is not because of our human spirit. It's because of the Holy Spirit. Since we have been given life by the Spirit, we should live according to the Spirit. That last phrase is, is very beautiful uh, in the original. <laughs> The word that was used for Roman soldiers when they marched together. When he lifted his right foot, everybody lifted his When he lifted his left foot, they all lifted Synchronized action. So what he's saying is, pay attention to the Holy Spirit and keep your actions synchronized with the Holy Spirit. Walk in step with the Holy Spirit. Move as the Holy Spirit. And above that, we also have, uh, uh, in verse 24, if we obey the Spirit, it's already been said, we won't fulfill the desires of the 
Their lives are getting changed. Uh huh. Because what has happened to so those passions and desires in the in verse 28? They put them to the cross. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow. The cross is a symbol of death. The cross is a symbol of death. So, someone has said, your old man is dead, but he keeps wanting to get up out of the grave. But he cannot, and he will, and your your flesh will try to convince you you just have to give it. But the reality is, no. No. And so a part of the, the Holy Spirit giving us that victory is reminding us, you don't have to do this. 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 Okay. Uh, we're in a good spot. We can stop here and have our 20-minute break. Okay. We're going to put the cat on coming. Dobre jutro.